welcome, especially to those joining us here in church. Welcome to those to those joining us through live stream. It is great to have you all with us. Just a few announcements before we begin. We have a few things coming up uh, in this next week anyway. Uh, we do have our Wednesday night Eucharist, as we always do, at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. So that will be happening, of course, as well. I just brought in a leaf from outside, it looks like. Uh, and then uh, next Sunday, of course, we will have our regular uh, morning Eucharist at 11. Next Sunday is, of course, October 4th, the Feast of St. Francis. And you know what that means? Blessing, Blessing of the animals. Good. Yes, that is what we are doing next <laughs> Sunday at 1 o'clock. So if you have any pets or any friends who have pets that would like to get blessed, bring them along at 1 o'clock next uh, Sunday, October 4th. We will bless all of the pets. We always love doing that anyway. So that is good. I'll have more information on the website and uh, various other places this week as well. Uh, people have been really good about their pledges. Thank you for everybody who's been pledging. It has been great for all of you to do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you, but keep that going. Keep that going, that is a good thing. I think that's all we have for announcements. It's kind of quiet, kind of nice, we like that. And with that, we will begin our service. Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Please be seated for our lessons. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, said the Lord, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall have saved their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they have committed. They shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to, to your ways, says the Lord. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 25 is found on page 6 of the bulletin, and we will re read it responsibly by full verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My, my God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to be put to shame, let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show, Show me your ways, ways, O Lord, and, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. If you have I trusted all the day long, remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright are you, O Lord. Therefore, will you teach sinners in your way. Your guide the humble in doing right, and teach your way to the lowly. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God is highly exalted, has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God, the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always <coughs> obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work on your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, 
enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, excuse me, when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they, bar they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man has two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, occasionally in our scripture readings on Sunday morning, uh, we hear not words of comfort that we would probably like to hear, at least during this time of pandemic and this time of social upheaval that we're all experiencing. That's what we want to do during these times. We want to hear words of comfort. We want to hear nice words from Jesus. Instead, sometimes we hear words that disturb us or shake us up a bit. Well, this morning is no exception in that sense. In our gospel reading for today, we hear some very uncomfortable words from Jesus. In our gospel reading for today, he tells us one particular thing <laughs> that should, should rile us up, should make us sit up and take notice a little bit. He tells us, truly I tell you, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the heaven before you. That is not what we want to hear. We're good Christians after all. Why would, why would he say that to us? Well, last week in my sermon, I quoted the great theologian Reginald Fuller, one of my heroes. I love Reginald Fuller. He said this, this is what God is doing in Jesus' ministry, giving the tax collectors and prostitutes an equal share with the righteous in the kingdom. That equal share, we're fine with that, but going before us into the kingdom, we're not all right with that. That's a little uncomfortable. Well, that and those words that, of course, that we heard from this morning's gospel reading, those are shocking statements. All of those statements are shocking, and they should be. They should be very shocking. It should shock us, and it should shake us to our core. It's a huge statement for Jesus to make. Partly, it does because things really haven't changed all that much from Jesus' time to our own. Okay, yes, maybe they, we don't have quite the same view now toward tax collectors and maybe even prostitutes as the people in Jesus' day did. Jesus uses these examples uh, of the unclean, so to speak, 
because that's what they were in those days. According to Judaic law, tax collectors and prostitutes were unclean. Tax collectors were unclean because they were handling the, uh, the pagan coins of the time with, with pagan images on them. Prostitutes were unclean because they were having promiscuous sex. Now we, of course, have our own versions of what is unclean in our society. Uh, for us, the unclean are the ones in our society we tend to forget about and purposely ignore. But we should give them some concern because that is what Jesus is telling us essentially in our gospel reading. We should give concern to those people that we consider unclean, those people we ignore. And I don't mean that from a judgmental point of view. We shouldn't be uh, giving them our concern because we're judging them. We should give them our concern because we're equals. We're equals of the kingdom of God together. Now, we, we should uh, pray for them often because to be viewed as unclean in our society, even now, is a death knell. It really is. It is a life of isolation and a life of rebuke. It is a life of being ostracized. The unclean are the ones who live on the fringes of our society. They are the ones who have often lived in the shadow of everything that is respectable in society. The unclean of our own society often live desperate, very secret lives. And much of what they've had to go through in their lives is known only to God. We have no clue sometimes what some people on the fringes have to deal with. And they need us. And they need our prayers. And they need our compassion. They definitely don't need our judgment. As uncomfortable as it is to confront them and to think about them, or even to be them, which some of us might be, that is exactly what Jesus is telling us we must do. Because by going there in our thoughts, in our prayers, most importantly in our ministries, we are going where Jesus went. We are coming alongside people who need our presence, our prayer, our ministries. And rather than shunning them, we, we need to see them as God sees them. Now I know I'm preaching to the choir here. We all understand this. We should understand this. I think everybody here, most people joining us live streaming, certainly understand this. But we also all are fully aware the church historically has not been good about this. Right now, the church around us is not always good about being that presence for those who need us. We as the church, as followers of Jesus, as Christians, need to see these ostracized people as the children of God that they are, as fellow human beings on this haphazard, uncertain journey that we are all on together. And more importantly, we need to see in themselves, that in them, ourselves to some extent. Because some of them really are us. Some of them have been shunned and excluded and turned away by us, by the church, by our government, by our society. The point of this morning's gospel reading is this. The kingdom of God is not what we may think it is. It is not made up of people just like us. It is not some exclusive country club in the sky. <clears throat> Let's give thanks to God that it is not some exclusive country club in the sky. It is not Mar-a-Lago floating <laughs> in, in the celestial high <laughs> places. Thank God it isn't. It is certainly not made up of a bunch of Christians who have done all the right things and condemn all the correct sins and sinners. It is, in fact, going to be made up of people who may never have gone to church. It, may, it will be made up of those people that we might not have ever, ever noticed in our lives. It will be made up of those people who have been maybe invisible to us. It will be made up of the people that we don't give a second thought to sometimes. Now, as I said, in our society today, we have our own tax collectors and prostitutes. We have our own unclean. They are the welfare cases. They are the homeless. They are the alcoholics and, or the drug addicts or the opioid addicts or the drug dealers. They are the sex workers. They are the lost among us. They are the ones who are trapped in their own sadness and in their own loneliness. They're the ones we, good Christians that we are, have worked all of our lives not to be. 
And they are the ones that Jesus tells us will be the inheritors of the kingdom of God. That is what the kingdom of heaven is really going to be like. It is filled with the people who look at us from their marginalized place in society. It is the ones who today are peeking at us from the curtains of their isolation and their loneliness. They are the ones who in their quiet agony watch as we drive out of sight from them. They are the ones who are on the outside looking in. And we are the ones who are in to some extent. It is they who they are the inheritors of the kingdom of God. And if we think they are not, then we are not listening to what Jesus is saying to us in our gospel reading for today. Jesus is wherever the inheritors of the kingdom are. Now, of course, we have to remember this. We, too, are the inheritors of the kingdom of God. Jesus isn't excluding us from this. He's just saying some of them are going to go in before us. We're not being excluded necessarily. But we, as inheritors of the kingdom of God, we, knowing what we know, need to act a certain way toward other inheritors of the kingdom. We, too, though, are inheritors when we love fully and completely. We, too, are inheritors when we follow those words of Jesus and strive to live out and do what he commands us to do. We, too, are the inheritors when we open our eyes and our minds and our hearts and our hands to those around us who no one else sees or loves. So let us truly be the inheritors of the kingdom of God. Let us love fully and completely as Jesus commands. Let us love our God, of course. We know we have to love our God. But let us also love those people who come into our lives. Let us look around at these people who share our lives and this world with us. Let us truly see those people around us and truly love them. And let us never cast a blind eye on anyone. Let us do as Jesus speaks to us, as God speaks to us in this morning's, God, in this morning's reading from Ezekiel. Let us do what God speaks to us to do in our reading from Ezekiel when he says, let us turn then and live. Let us turn then and live. When we are doing that, we are being the inheritors of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Holy God, help us to see not with the eyes of this world, but with the eyes of those who are destined for your kingdom. In looking, may we truly see those whom you love and cherish, and let us reach out and save them as you, as your Son also has commanded us to do. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
us offer supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgivings for everyone, through Christ Jesus, our only mediator, saying, Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray to you this morning for the Church, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for the province of the Episcopal Church of the Sudan, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for the Episcopal Diocese of Delaware, for Bishop Keith and the Episcopal Diocese of North Dakota, for the Standing Committee of the Diocese and the Diocesan Council, for St. Stephen's Fargo, for deacons of the diocese, and for all who minister in Christ, and for all of your holy people in every place, holy God. Hear our prayer. For Temple Bethel and all of our Jewish sisters and brothers, as they observe Yom Kippur, the conclusion of the high holy days, holy God. Hear our prayer. For our congregation of St. Stephen's, especially for Father Jamie, our priest, for myself, your deacon, for Jean and Jessica, our wardens, and for our vestry, and for all of our ministries, and for those who are present with us this morning and those who are absent, that we may embody your love and acceptance of all people and continue to be a place of refuge for those who seek you. We pray today especially for Jay Ide, for Callista Ide, Holly and Michael Eklund, Debbie Fahey, that we may be blessed with vitality and growth. Holy God, hear our prayer. For those who cannot be here at this time to share in Christ's body and blood, but who join us at this altar in your spirit. Holy God. Hear our prayer. For mercy, peace, and justice among the leaders of our nation, and all nations, and for all peoples. Holy God. Hear our prayer. For our cities of Fargo, Moorhead, and West Fargo, and those who live here, and for our families, companions, and all those we love. Holy God. Hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, this morning especially we pray for Josh, for Darla, for Alpha, for Brian, for Father Mike, and for Bobby. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by the coronavirus, that they may find relief, healing, and recovery, and that this, this pandemic may end soon. Holy God, hear our prayer. For orphans and widows, prisoners and captives and their families, and all those in distress, and especially this morning, we pray for Liz, for Lil, for Chris, and for Della. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all of the blessings of this life, Holy God, hear our prayer. For ourselves and all of our petitions, spoken silently or aloud, and now ask this congregation to share those. Holy God, hear our prayer. For those who now rest in Christ, and for all of the departed, especially this morning we pray for John Shaw and Nyleen. Holy God, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Stephen the Martyr, and all the saints, we offer ourselves and one another to you, the living God. Holy God, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ we behold your glory. Receive the offering of your people gathered before you, and open our hearts and mouths to praise your greatest salvation, the same Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also and with, you. with you. Very good. Peace, everybody. Uh, please be seated. Just a few birthdays, I know. We have some birthdays coming up. Uh, we see that uh, Sebastian Chackney has a birthday on the 2nd. And Stephanie Garcia has a birthday on the 3rd. So we're going to pray for both of them. We miss them both very, very much. So uh, we will pray for them. Anybody else we should be praying for birthdays this week? If not, if anybody has any birthdays out there, please do share them, and we will pray for them as well. So let us pray for Sebastian and Stephanie and anybody else who's having a birthday this week. So let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a blessing on Sebastian and uh, Stephanie and everybody else who might be having a birthday this week. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't see any baptism anniversaries, any that anybody want to share, or any wedding anniversaries. All right. Well, that's nice and easy then. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. 
and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God. This is the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this supper. And at this time, let us pray for all those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. Lord Jesus, be present with those who long to be here and receive your Holy Presence in this Eucharist. Come spiritually into their hearts and let them know your healing, loving, and life-giving presence, and never let them be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us now go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.